Hello and welcome back to another episode of Saving Your Disaster Campaign. We're playing XCOM 2 War of the Chosen and this is the Psionic Escalation Disaster Campaign. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing on this legendary messed up campaign where we're uh, trying to expand desperately to fight against the Avatar Doomclock. Generally it looks uh, okayish and I think uh, we've stabilized parts of it i.e the research portion is going fine but we will need more scientists and more importantly we will need to expand as fast as humanly possible we're going to do that all of that uh, but before we do it let's start with getting a scientist one step at a time as they say today we're sabotaging a transmitter and the team that i brought uh, with me is yet again one without any psionics because uh, the other uh, characters need to level and they need to level fast we got ourselves both of our specialists in this uh, particular uh, run because i want to level them they are the backbone of every good campaign you need to have high level specialists to help to keep your team healthy if you pair that with heavy armor you can make a lot of mistakes and get away with it let's put it that way uh, so if you can uh, successfully counter heal and have enough hit points to not be immediately shut down that's the road to success in a very simple formula we got ourselves Malcolm X, who's the highest level soldier, hopefully getting him closer to that sweet, sweet colonel rank. And we got the highest sniper as well as Bones. Gotta level him. So let's see how this one is going to play out. I'm uh, beyond excited to go into this mission because finally we got a somewhat decent team at our hands. Look at that, we just landed. Got ourselves a nice lost mission. And on top of that, we got to do a speed run of the loss because we got to get to the transmitter. So a couple of things that I would doubt is that they do have any of the transmission relays upstairs. That's just not how it works, which means for once when we're fighting against uh, the loss, We might want to take the low ground. There and there are devices, which is great. We're still hidden. Can we can we reasonably accept the time loss by taking the high ground? It would be one turn, two turns to get to there. Probably not. So we got to play it different, which is nice. I like how XCOM changes it up from time to time. You just don't have this time the option to to wait. Instead, let's focus on the first pack. Seeing a couple of things here, really. Let's see, can I? No, we can't reach that. So Malcolm will just stay there. Bola, which is an interesting name for a grenadier. Specifically a female one, right? Okay, guess I wasn't 100% uh, sure or clear yet that females can be baller grenadiers as well but whatever XCOM's RNG name generator makes it happen good moving into a full cover and mega mega is taking her position as well Everybody is in a somewhat sorted, tied up, uh, tied up position. We're not going to remote start. Not yet. Can't get upstairs, which is fine. Might as well move to here. Now. 
Good. They are reacting um, on the lost, by the way, not on us, which is fine. They would not react to them if we wouldn't have scouted out the losts as well. So if both of them are in the fog of war, basically nothing happens. But since they're not, they are now officially triggered. We're still in concealment. And they might even take a couple of hits here. Interesting. Oh, yeah. That's great. Love it. Good. I mean, we know that the Andromedon has positioned itself somewhere behind here, right? So the question is really, what do we want to do about it? By the way, uh, see, this is the advantage of an ex uh, extended or expanded uh, grenade launcher, because all of a sudden you have this massive, massive line of sight, uh, uh, line of effect. So how about we're just taking away most of the cover? That'd be a good idea, potentially. Got to deal with the Andromedon. Yeah. I really like that because it gives us another turn, but it does not get rid of the Andromedon problem. Frost Bomb with the expanded size <coughs> grew significantly as well. So what would we do? What would we do? Uh, we do have a rocket launcher, which could be a starter for us. Being keenly aware that that might trigger the loss, but it should also take away a lot of the cover. Okay, the key question now is why, why are we not, are not seeing the Andromedon? That scares me a bit. Ooh, look at you being all sneaky and hiding yourself back there. Well, that's going to be a problem. All right, Malcolm. Malcolm has untouchable. But Malcolm does not have implacable. That's a bit of a problem. Probably should reskill him. We could definitely get untouchable here. Trying to see how we're dealing with the uh, with the uh, Andromedon because it has a solid position there. I'm going to give uh, it that. The other option is what we could do. I mean, I hate to do it, but you definitely could get rid of uh, the walls here and start getting it down. You know what? We might do that. It will bring more losts and it's incredibly wasteful for the first turn to get rid of it. Fortunately, it's not as strong as uh, the shredding gun. This here is destructible cover, believe it or not. Do 
just requires a bit more work. All right, so we got like what? AP rounds, perfect. That's exactly what we're what I'm looking for. This absolute piece of garbage here, the Andromedon, needs to die. That's one hit. That's another one. <coughs> Very nice. Not killed yet, but calm down. We got this. So a couple of things here. Number one. Let's start injuring the trooper, I suppose. Yeah, I do have an idea. Okay, so let's injure the trooper. Didn't work out, fair enough. That's only a 90% shot. I'm not going to uh, be willing to take any chances here. We're team working. To kill the Andromedon. That will trigger Untouchable. And at the same time, since he still has Bladestorm, he's going to at least hit it once. We have another shot, which we're going to most likely use in order to get us another turn. Don't need to do that yet. Taking a better position over here. Not going to do anything yet. And let's just give us an extra turn. A lot of resources used for this first pack. So that was not optimal. First one to admit it. But I failed to track the Andromedon well enough and it was just in a really bad position There is the first swarm Which is fine Malcolm X can deal with that swarm completely by himself All right, let's make sure we're clear. So we got between the eyes, right? Let's first and foremost get rid of the shell. Shells can't take uh, any cover which is why they are an easy prey. Got a lot of potential enemies over there. And before we charge in, how about... Okay, so that looks fine. Can we reach the elite trooper? Mm, not quiet. Do have an idea though. Did he not have between the eyes? Oh my gosh, we did not have between the eyes. So that was incredibly risky. We do not have between the eyes. I was, oh boy, why, are, why was I under the impression that we had between the eyes? 
That could have easily been a really, really, really bad play. See, if you play so many different campaigns, at some point you lose track of what is happening where. Good. So here's the deal. I think I am simply going to take the safe route. Moving up. And eliminating the threat. We still can deal with the Chosen in a second. Could we get upstairs? No, we cannot. Okay. But we could theoretically move up here. Not a bad position. And we have enough. We do have enough um, ammunition to take them out one by one. All right, that's one down. Two, four, six, seven. Yep. Luckily, we got that magnetic weapon upgrade because this here feels almost like a plasma weapon, <clears throat> which is great. It's a good feeling. Of course, the last one misses. Got a pretty heavy target over there. Let's move over and see if we can get some of them down. Trying to take the insured kills first. Yeah, at some point we gotta start softening this guy up. Yep. Which is fine. Moving into the open here. Mainly because I don't want to be in range for them to charge at us. There is one more chosen behind the wall. Got him. Oak says I am to obey. Moving up. I am going to risk, let's see, I'm actually going to risk that. We could restill the next turn and they can't reach us. Continuing to eliminate all of them. And whilst we're at it, let's be efficient and take a couple of extra rounds. Going to overwatch. And unfortunately, we're being ambushed by another patrol. Could have been worse. Could have been worse.
Problem that I'm seeing is we're going to be stuck for a bit. <clears throat> As this here is going to be pretty raw to fight through all of them. It's just a lot of hit points. And with all of them triggering, it just does not get better. Yeah, we gotta put Malcolm X into a more active position. He can deal with most of the Chosen. And we gotta reload, so there are a couple of problems here, not only one. Terms of frost grenade, just out of curiosity. Could we launch something back here? I mean yeah, that would be a hit, right? I'm most worried about uh, the stun lancer to be honest. Okay, so, first things first, let's just take the 100% shots. My ammo is gone. I hate fighting from low ground, it's just not a really good position to be in. To be precise, it's an incredibly bad position to be in in the first place. And more loss certainly do not make it better. Okay, gotta deal with them as well. The stun lance ahead most likely has priority. Gotta be honest, this here looks like a tactical repositioning in my book. We really can't do much where it can take a lot of full cover. Malcolm X reloads. Kill the show, uh, the lost here. <clears throat> okay. Could go for full cover here, which is probably okay because we have pretty decent aiming angles. Could go for full cover here, which is maybe even better because we could take the high ground in a turn afterwards. This here is decent as well, but I think I'm going to go for for this full cover here. Fortunately missing the shot, oh, it's not optimal. Good, so what else can we do? <clears throat> can deal with the losses up here. 
don't even know if I want to do it because the Stun Lancer has plenty of targets available. Six eight. That's not even a hundred percent kill. What else ki uh, could we do? Oh, let's take them down again. Missed the target, unfortunately. Good copy. Moving, on target. Moving in. Do we have a grenade? It's not the most beautiful thing to do, uh, to pull even more losses by using explosives, but in this case it worked. Moving back. Going back for the sh uh, to hide in the shadows and reloading. So yeah, we lost a lot of momentum here. But luckily for us, we even got some uh, faceless ones on this mission. Good. He's wasting his psionic energy on targets that I couldn't care less about. And as predicted, the Stun Lancer will take the first target available. Lancer's got a lance, you know how it is. Even more losses. This whole map is more and more becoming a slugfest. And of course, they're not going for Advent. As always, they do have about a 70% chance just from my personal experience to go for XCOM instead of Advent. Yeah. This here, by the way, is a perfect uh, point to uh, stop for a cliffhanger. XCOM is swarmed by losts and has triggered more than one pack on top of it. A classical psychic situation where you want to fight the entire map um, at once. So good job, that really worked out in our favor. But in all seriousness, this is going to be a pretty interesting situation. And I'll pause it here as a cliffhanger. See you in the next mission, guys. As always, if you enjoy saving your disaster campaigns or anything that has to do with XCOM 2, feel free, uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel and or leave a positive comment down below. See you in the next run, guys. Bye-bye.